when people hear the word science, they may think first of natural science. But science means much more than this. Standing up for science means standing up for all forms of free and disciplined inquiry. It means standing up for facts. It means respecting evidence. And it means defending institutions that produce and disseminate knowledge. Science, in this broad sense, is under siege in many countries. Just yesterday, for example, the president of Hungary signed legislation that would force the Central European University, the region's most successful and prestigious university, to close its doors. Standing up for science means standing up for all forms of free inquiry. I'm a scholar of ancient Rome, and academic freedom is important to me because the study of the past is under attack, both from those who want to falsify history and those spent only on present profit. If we lose our knowledge of the past, we will lose our understanding of the present. As the Roman statesman and philosopher Marcus Tullius Cicero said 2,000 years ago, not to know what happened before you were born is to remain a child. Science works well only in a climate of academic freedom. Good science asks fundamental questions and reports knowledge truthfully. Academic freedom ensures that this can happen even when, especially when, the answer differs from a specific personal, political, or economic agenda. Progress for humanity depends on the generation of new knowledge, much of which is obtained by researchers at universities and institutions who devote their careers to understanding difficult problems. In my field of biology, for example, millions of lives are saved and improved every year from understanding difficult issues like what levels of lead are toxic in water and what are the causes of disease such as, diseases such as AIDS. Unfortunately, sometimes this information uh, poses expensive problems for business or government who might wish to suppress this research, that specific research, or even research more generally. This is why progress for humanity depends on prevention of such top-down control. Like all scientists, I am frustrated and distressed by the deconstruction of factual evidence and the falsehoods and hoaxes that have virtually become everyday occurrences. Recent examples include the trivialization of climate change and promises of clean coal in the US, a ban of evolutionary theory from curricula in Turkey, and suggestions that influxes of hundreds of thousands of young male refugees will destabilize social order in Germany. In my own scientific work, I seek to discover laws of nature governing the evolution and mechanisms of adaptive behavior by applying scientific methods. This work is evidence-based and reflects sustained critical thinking to evaluate alternative hypotheses, not alternative facts. I study behavior because it defines the nature of our humanity and sociality. It integrates biology, social science, and the humanities by generating facts about universal traits such as altruism, mate attraction, parenting, cognition, ag aggression, health, and social stress, stress. And it is crucial for predicting our use of natural resources and how we preserve biodiversity. Yes, the world is complicated, and so is human nature. Science and research must therefore remain unbiased and committed to facts and truth. Otherwise, our open democratic societies are at risk. So no to alternative facts, yes to scholarship and academic freedom. As an evolutionary biologist, I know that my field of research is controversial because it, the fact of evolution often conflicts with people's religious beliefs. But the ability to study the process of evolution is essential to ensure that we continue to make progress in medical research and the control of diseases. Bacteria do not develop or learn to become resistant to antibiotics, they evolve. Bacterial evolution occurs in hospitals every day. We need to understand this process. Ultimately, academic freedom is important because I do not know any other way that we can gain a basic understanding of the natural world other than to conduct scientific investigations. Any decision maker who doubts the importance of uh, allowing for scientific truth and hearing it and doing something about it should visit the Vasa Museum in Stockholm. 
Uh, this displays a ship that sunk at the beginning of the 17th century. This ship was a royal commission. Uh, it was going to be used by the King of Sweden in his wars against Poland. It was a huge financial investment. The king himself gave specifications as to how uh, big, how narrow, and how tall it should be in order to um, realize new uh, capabilities for war. But as a result of that, the ship sank because neither his first master builder nor the second one after the first one died, nor other people who had been told that this is a dangerous way to build the ship had the courage to tell the king about it. So the importance to um, be allowed to discover scientific truth and communicate it to decision makers and have the decision makers take it into consideration when they're making decisions is paramount. That summer, about 30 people died as a result of this oversight. The state of Sweden lost a huge financial investment and may have even lost a war as a result. As a historian, in a sense, we are all gatekeepers of our past and the ways in which history gets written, who gets remembered and who gets forgotten is absolutely critical to our discipline and indeed to culture itself. One only needs to look at the regimes where people were not allowed to write about things or access certain archives to see what happened. If we don't have free access to the archives, we don't reconstruct our pasts in, in certain ways. Therefore, we're unable to engage with the present. That's why it's so important.